Hey guys, Dr. Dobson. We're going to be doing a 27MO in this one to fix a uh, cavity. Uh, this is a patient that came in complaining of food stuckage in the upper left and also pain in the upper left. X-ray kind of looks a bit funny, uh, weird presentation. PA shows that there's actually a lesion on the 26 that we made a plan to do a root canal for, but in this one we're just going to be uh, doing the MO on the 27. So we'll anesthetize, we'll get a rubber dam on. We would have frozen the buckle and the palatal. You can see that the rubber dam is resting directly on the pallet because the it wouldn't stay on the tooth. So we'll get opening up the tooth with a KS O KS one burr on a high speed. You can see some tooth decay in there. Not going to be too deep though, but we'll uh, open up the contacts here, opening up the lingual and the buckle until we can see daylight. Sorry, I took a little bit of a break from uploading. I had a couple things on the go this weekend, but. Hopefully get some more out during the week. I have a bunch prepared, just need to narrate. So the lingual contact is open. We'll open up buccal proximal contact. And mostly using indirect vision for the whole, the whole thing. And then once the buckle's open, we'll open up the gingival proximal contact. And there's some food down there that we'll pick out. We'll open it up a little bit more so it's easier to get our matrix band on. And once our box is pretty much finished, we just want to refine the uh, sharp edges of the uh, internal surfaces of the prep with a large round diamond burr. I usually use a high speed for the last burr to touch the tooth before etching because I think that it gives a bit of a cleaner smear layer than a slow speed. And that's pretty much good to go. We'll open up the uh, or just uh, remove any unsupported enamel in the proximal contacts with flame. And that's pretty much looking good to go so I think we're going to get to restoring here next. Sometimes if I scratch uh, gold or just the crown, then I'll take a uh, I'll take a carbide flame and just try to smooth it off a little bit. I think that was before we took the flame to it, but that's ready to restore. So, I'm gonna get a sectional band on and then stabilize it with our plastic wedge. Apply the separator ring, and I'll usually leave it for a little bit so that the PDL can stretch out. There it is matrixed. And then we will etch five seconds, rinse dry, and then apply their uh, restorative material, um, Aquia Forte. Pack it with a moist cotton pellet and then leave it for five minutes. Come back, remove the separator and the matrix assembly. And then begin uh, reducing the excess restorative material with a high speed. And the stuff sets pretty hard, um, but it's nice after like five minutes or so because it still um, removes pretty easily. And the other advantage is that you can really see the margins because the material dries out when you take a slow speed to it. So we'll just take it down uh, approximately anatomically before we check the bite. We'll use some thick articulating paper, take down any high spots. And then we'll put on our coat, Equia coat varnish, light cure it, and that's all done. Video credit for this one goes to Dr. Francisco in Argentina. Thank you, Francisco. And that's this one. So hopefully going to be putting out a couple more videos this week. Check the contact with floss, and we're happy. Send the patient home, make a plan to endo the 2-6.